Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here. This time to talk about Angel Season 3. Meeting my icon, Catherine, is about here. Yes, once again, have the uh, thick box set, as, as you should always get as a collector, in my opinion. Um, just those uh, slim sets, they're, they're fine, but really, it, it's satisfying to still be able to open these up. And, you know, you get all the different images and everything like that. Open it up, you get more. There goes one of the discs. That's an issue with those. <laughs> but what I mean is, you guys know what I mean. Just uh, there's something more satisfying about it, about some of these older shows. Um, even before they had switched over to you know cheaper cases of everything and things like that. Uh, it's just uh, more satisfying if you're really a fan of the show, if you really love the series and the characters. Something like this is much more special to have, makes it feel like a much uh, better piece of the collection that deserves to be. So yeah, just let me get these you know, back in place. Um, but yeah, Angel Season 3. Uh, I finished this actually a about a couple weeks ago, um, but these videos are kind of daunting to do sometimes. Um, any TV show season reviews kind of are. Um, you know, of course it's 22 episodes. And, uh, you know, it's just hard to go over everything. I feel like I'm missing details, which I very well will be. Hey, this is more of a general review. I'm going to try and keep this to, like, 10, 15 minutes or so. Because um, I could be talking for, like, an hour or two if I try to talk about, like, every little bit or every episode or something like that. I'm just speaking about it from, like, a general uh, stance here. <clears throat> and, of course, this season was significant because it was when... I think it was Buffy that actually went over to, like, the UPN network or something like that. Angel stayed on the WB, so that caused issues, so there were no actual crossovers this season, which really fucking sucked, <laughs> excuse my uh, language there, um, but Buffy you know, literally comes back from the dead, you know, uh, starting, you know, in, uh, you know, in uh, Buffy season six, um, so that's something Angel would really want to know about, and you'd think he'd want to see their reunions together, that's one of the main things he looked forward to. Um, but yeah, the reunion happens off screen, and you don't really get much of a mention about what actually happened, um, just besides that they either don't want to talk about it. <laughs> and that could have to do with Buffy's sort of psychology as she goes through with herself in the sixth season, but still would have been good, because I'm sure they had an initial embrace and everything like that. So it feels really, uh, really just poor timing that it had to happen then, so he didn't actually get to see it. Um, but luckily it kind of worked itself out for the uh, last season where I know Angel crosses over by the end of Buffy, which is good. But that's something that still bothered me, you know, from the Angel side of it as well. I talked about from the Buffy end as well. Um, but Angel Season 3 is still a good one. It was one of the most, uh, kind of acclaimed seasons I noticed when I first started watching the show and I looked up some things about it in general. Um, you know, not spoilers or anything, just, you know, like, kind of what people's favorite, part, you know, favorite uh, seasons were and such, you know, rankings and everything. Avoiding spoilers as best I can. Um, this one for me, I, I still liked it a lot. You know, I can sit down and watch uh, an episode of Angel or an episode of Buffy especially and just, you know, relax, get fully immersed into it, compelled, you know, laugh a little, you know, and actually, you know, really get emotionally invested. And that's still the case here. I still really love all the... You know, most of the characters, um, you know, and just the chemistry of them and everything. And uh, Holt was definitely a good villain to have, you know, that, uh, you know, from Angel's days as Angelus, um, you know, killing, you know, slaughtering the guy's whole family, and then, you know, him and Darla being hunted by him for so long, and then this guy being uh, preserved and, you know, brought back. You know, it's a good dynamic, you know, time back to, 
you know, one of Angel's many dark deeds. Um, you know, when he was Angelus. So, the guy, the actor who played uh, Holtz did a very, very good job. And, you know, kind of the whole group he forms, you know, with training some other hunters and stuff like that, I thought was a good, uh, you know, kind of antagonistic threat, you know, you know worked. Um, but I, I feel like it was sort of patted out a little bit sometimes, you know, I felt like it was a bit, I don't know, like I felt like it was a bit stretched in terms of what actually happened with that over the season. Um, and also they were really starting to push the uh, Angel and Cordelia romance this season, which I really, really don't believe in. <laughs> um, I'll talk about it even more when I do my uh, season 4 review, but they are really focusing on it hard this season as well. It just doesn't work for me. It just feels very, very forced. Uh, Charisma Carpenter does a nice job, you know, performance-wise, um, but I've never really loved the character from a writing standpoint. I mean, she has grown. She's sort of like uh, Caroline from the Vampire Diaries, and that she matures and sort of, you know, becomes more one with, uh, you know, you know who she's, uh, you know, kind of uh, grown to be um, as an individual character. But it still doesn't mean Caroline and Stefan, or in this case, Angel and uh, Cordelia, have to hook up. Where all of a sudden be in love with each other, especially from Angel's perspective. Um, it feels very forced, it's like a network thing, or like a thing that Joss Whedon and the others feel like they had to do. Oh, they're the two leads of the show, so they have to, you know, want to get romantic with each other, right? And it, it just doesn't work. Um, you know, and I love Angel and Buffy, so that's probably part of it as well. It feels kind of weird. Um, but not just, you know, Buffy has, you know, tried to move on as well. Um, but, you know, they, they still love each other more than anything, but, you know, they're just in these very different, uh, you know, I don't need to explain it. <laughs> um, but, you know, even just from a character standpoint, I just don't believe that Angel would actually fall in love with Cordelia. I don't know. I feel like, they, if anything, they had more of, like, a really strong brother-sister connection that was building. Um, and just the romance between the two, it doesn't really click for me. I don't feel like any, you know, romantic chemistry, necessarily just feels a bit odd. It should have been like uh, Cordelia and Gunn or something, or like even gone for you know, Cordelia and Wesley again. And uh, once we get into Connor, whenever I talk about season four, how many people has Cordelia been with now? I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just... Uh, that, that put me off for a little bit with the season as well, but luckily there is a really, really uh, just... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for here? <laughs> um, something with an S. Yeah, superb uh, Darla episode with you know her being pregnant. At first, I felt like a forced storyline as well. Feel a little, feel <laughs> it felt a little typical. And you know, you know now I know the uh, you know the Vampire Diaries and originals are obviously inspired by uh, by live angel stuff, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, I guess it's fresh off watching those as well. The whole angel has to have a son thing felt a little repetitive. <laughs> Um, and you know, the counter thing is nothing to expect, especially going into season four and such, which again, we're not talking about season four here. Um, but in terms of Darla actually being pregnant, it turned out much better than I thought. Um, Julie Benz did a really nice job as the character, and when she actually, you know, stakes herself to make sure the baby's actually born when they're being pursued by Holtz, it's a really, really great scene. And you get a really kind of full circle development payoff for Darla there that I really, really appreciated. That was probably the best episode of the season. Again, Holt is a, is a good bad guy to have. Um, you know, because I understand his motivation and everything. But then when he goes through the portal with, uh, the, you know, with uh, Connor, you know, the baby, and he comes back, you know, he's, you know, he's aged because more time has passed there and everything. Um, you know, kind of, ra you know, raise Connor to believe that, you know, Angel is still just an jealous at his core and he need to put him down no matter what he is now because he deserves it. You know, which in a way he does, you could argue. But then you see this development from uh, Holtz, you know, that he, you know, he basically learned that... Uh, I'm not really going to explain this correctly, um, but he's basically willing to uh, let Connor grow off with Angel because he, you know, the boy needs his father. He needs like a real understanding of... Uh, he developed a more reasonable perspective on it, basically. But then that's, called, that's all kind of undone when he sets it up to try and make Connor hate Angel forever by making it look like Angel killed him anyway. And the let, you know, despite the letter and everything, so that basically undoes the drama that uh, Holt's got at the end there. Which is understandable, he never actually tried to forgive Angel, but 
I don't know, I feel like they could have gone another layer there with them, and then they just kind of pull it back and make it the same as it was earlier in the season anyway. <laughs> I, I probably didn't explain that correctly, but I, know, I feel like they could have done that better somehow. Um, and the actor they have playing Connor, the uh, teenage Connor, he's fine. I've warmed up to him more despite frustrations with the character in the, the fourth season. Um, so that was all right. I, one really good thing about the season was Wesley. I can't believe most of us talk about him. Um, of course, Angel is my favorite character on this show, but right after that is Wesley. Um, just amazing. Just the, uh, you know, just everything this character has been through and uh, been built into since he like, appeared on Buffy. Um, and when he thinks Angel is going to try and kill Connor because of this prophecy, you know, maybe alludes to something else later on, but he thinks he has to protect Connor, so he ends up, you know, almost trying to give him over to Holtz, but basically just trying to, you know, keep him away from both sides in general, and Angel feels betrayal of that, because it ends up putting, you know, Connor with Holtz and everything. Um, and just the shame and the guilt you see Wesley feel with all that, and the way he's rejected by the whole group and everything, and you really feel for him. Um, but you kind of understand both perspectives on it. I thought that was actually a really well done plot point this season. And then uh, you also had Fred, you know, becoming a regular part of the cast who I liked. Um, Amy Acker, you know, she does a really nice job. Um, she probably has more of a use in the show than Cordelia ever does. Um, I've said it before in my Buffy videos, I don't really believe uh, Cordelia would actually have survived this long. She should have died in the first two, three-ish seasons of Buffy. Her surviving a few seasons in the Angel is just kind of plot armor. <laughs> um, you know, she's a good talker and kind of decent deduction skills, I guess, just because they make her. But I, I don't know. Cordelia doesn't really bring anything personally to the table for me. I, again, I don't want to make this a Cordelia hate video, but... I don't know. Fred can sometimes be a bit frustrating too, kind of her, uh, you know, she's kind of meant to be a comic relief often as well. And it got a little bit old as the season went on for me, and also kind of too much concentration on Lauren sometimes, although he's a fun character to have around. I know the actor passed away, which of course is very, very sad, but just from a character standpoint, sometimes I feel like they take up too much time, I wish they'd concentrate more on, you know, Angel specifically, or Darla type of storylines and such, but sometimes I think they spread it a little little thin. Um, and they had like two gambling type of episodes this season. I, I don't know. <laughs> right. I might be thinking of one in season four as well. Who knows. Uh, but yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I feel like I've been complaining a lot in this video, but I still really liked Angel season three. Um, I just don't think it's necessarily my favorite the way it was for some other people. Um, I have some massive frustrations with season four, but overall a uh, certain main plot I think I'm actually enjoying more in the fourth season. The whole beast thing. Um, which is not yeah, surprising to me, but overall I still really liked it, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm still giving it like an 89-90%. So you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, like, subscribe, and if there's any other part of it you want to talk about, feel free to comment below and we will continue. Otherwise, catch you guys next time. Peace.